Hey love, so I'm going to jump straight into it. Today this video is going to be about 10 things that you should do and look for when testing out hair fenders. So a lot of people, you know, they will buy vendors um, from a lot of people and they'll buy the hair from vendors but when they get the hair they don't really know what to look for or what to do to see if the hair is actually good quality so that is what this video is going to be about today and i'm going to be showing you everything that you should look for any red flags any good signs and yeah we're just going to jump straight into it because you want to make sure that your brand will offer nothing but quality okay so if you are interested keep watching What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that like stocking. Just Josh. So. The first thing that you should do. It is the easiest thing to do. It takes no time to do. But most people do it as soon as they take the hair out of the pack and that is smell the hair okay so you want to make sure you smell the hair if the hair has a smell to it nine times out of ten the hair has been chemically processed processed okay so if the hair has a smell to it you definitely don't want to sell your client's hair that has a smell to it okay nobody wants to walk around with smelly hair of course you know you do want to make sure that you are telling your clients to co-wash and pre-wash their hair and all of that good stuff but still that is a red flag that if it has a smell to it it has probably been processed and it has a whole bunch of chemicals in it or whatever so that is something that you want to look for that's the first thing that you should be doing as soon as you take the hair out of the package the second thing you want to do is of course run your fingers through the hair see if the hair has any shedding see if you know how much hair is coming out of it sometimes i have had experienced hair I'm a hairstylist so um, I have experienced hair where I've took some of the hair out and run my fingers through it and it's shedding automatically too much shedding straight off the jump you definitely don't want that you know some hair will have minimal shedding that is okay but you just want to make sure that it's not too much okay because we have to keep in mind and be realistic that our real hair actually sheds okay so you're not going to just always get hair that has completely no shedding, okay? So, just keep in mind that it is okay. Do not be too alarmed if you see a little bit of shedding. We, minimum shedding is okay, but if we have a tremendous amount of shedding and it's just too much, no. Especially not fresh out the pack. That's a big, big no, big red flag, okay? So, that's the second thing you want to do as soon as you pull the hair out. Run your fingers through it and see how much shedding we got off from the back okay the third thing you want to do is check for true length so what I mean by that is check and make sure that the the length that you asked your vendor to send you is actually true and what it say it is so let's just say for instance if you ordered all 24 inch bundles how you can measure the hair is just simply get you a tape measure stretch the hair out even if it's body wave, stretch the hair all the way out, fully out, get your tape measure, get it to start at the beginning of the bundle all the way to the end and check to make sure that it's actually 24 inches. I, I don't need it to be 24 inches with the wave. I need it to be 24 inches all the way stretched out. So you want to check and make sure that your vendor is actually selling you the true length of what you asked for because trust me, they will cheat you. I had a horrible experience of vendors sending me nowhere near the link that I asked for. And honestly, I could tell without even checking and pulling out my tape measure, I could still see that it was not the true link. And they got me, but always have a tape measure and make sure that you're checking to make sure that you have the true link, okay? Because trust me, especially my girlies that like to wear long hair and they 30-inch butts down, they're going to hit you up and they're going to say, oh, ma'am, this does not look like it's 30 inches. So make sure that you're selling the true length. The fourth thing you want to do is you want to check to see if it's human hair or synthetic hair. So there is also a difference between virgin and raw hair, but that is probably a whole nother video that I'm probably going to have to make. But nine times out of 10, all of the cuticles should be going in one direction. So if it is human hair, if you run your fingers through the hair and it feels smooth in one direction and you take your fingers and run it back, it should have a little roughness to it. That is how you know that it is human hair. So you can actually do the same thing with your real hair. It's not going to feel smooth if you 
take your fingers down but if you go back up you're going to feel a little roughness with synthetic hair it's going to feel smooth in both directions it's going to feel too smooth and that is how you're going to know that it's synthetic hair or if you even have pieces and strands of synthetic hair within your bundle because they will also try to do that sometimes as well so just check and make sure you know run your fingers through keep going in different directions and see if you feel the same texture when you go in each direction. The more the hair is processed, the less you'll be able to even feel the cuticles, which means it'll probably be smooth in both directions. So that's how you'll know also that it's been too overly processed. For hair that is not as processed, you should still be able to feel some type of roughness in the hair, whether, you know, when you're going in either or direction. So that is how you can check to see the type of hair that your vendor is actually selling you. The fifth thing you want to do is you want to do a burn test. So if the hair is human hair, it will just simply break off and turn to ashes. If the hair is synthetic, when in it burns, it will just literally like melt and feel like plastic. And that is how you know that it's synthetic. But even with human hair, you still want to make sure that you put the fire out immediately because human hair does also burn very fast. But just keep in mind you don't have to do a whole bundle to do a burn test just cut off a small piece of the hair and just light it up at the end and see what it does and that's how you'll know if it's human or synthetic or whatever the case may be the sixth thing you want to check for is check for those red looking strands in the hair now i've seen different types of color strands in the hair sometimes i felt on them and it's felt like yarn or um something like that I don't honestly I don't really know what that's there for it's probably there to just weigh out to the actual weight it's supposed to be but sometimes we also do see red strands that are actually a piece of hair so nine times out of ten if you see that it is virgin hair and it does not mean that it's not human hair so it is in fact human hair however most of the time, if it's virgin hair, like I said before a thousand times, it's been chemically processed. So the chemicals that they may be using to process it strips out the melanin of the hair, which leaves it to turning red or orange or copper or whatever color those strands may be. And that is why you see those red strands in the hair. It does not mean that it's not human hair or whatever, but sometimes if you actually see a piece of hair that is that color, that's probably what that means. And like I said, if it's virgin hair, you if you expect to sell virgin hair, you should already be expecting that it's going to be chemically processed. Virgin hair means it's chemically processed, okay? Raw hair means it's unprocessed. So if you do see these red strands or whatever, sometimes that may mean it's been overly processed, but it will definitely confirm, it will definitely confirm that it has been chemically processed. So those are the red strands and all of that that you probably see. The seventh thing you want to do is weigh the hair and check the density. So you can simply do this by just getting a weighing scale, putting the bundle on there or your wig, and just see that it is actually the weight that it's supposed to be. A standard bundle should weigh around 100 grams. Well, it should be 100 grams. That is the standard weight of a bundle, a full bundle. Um, so if you're planning on selling wigs also, most vendors are probably going to try to sell you 150% density, which is it's okay. It just all depends on the vendor. But in my opinion, 150% density is a little too thin for me. Um, I personally like 180% density or 200. 180 for sure, but 150 is what they're going to try to automatically sell you. But if you're looking for full wigs, you definitely want to go within the 180. It goes all the way up to like 250, I think, 250% density. But 180 is definitely, you know, a decent full wig. They also have 150 and 130% density. Too thin for me. But like I said, it all depends on the vendor. Some I've seen some 150 density wigs that are you know okay they're decent but for me i'm doing 180 but definitely get you a scale and weigh and make sure that you actually have the right density wig because like i said starting out you don't know you just going by what the vendors tell you so make sure you have all of these tools and everything that i'm telling you to get so you can make sure 
that the what you plan on selling to your customers is actually true and legit in, in everything you say, okay? Because things are becoming more advanced. People are starting to learn more about hair, and they're going to check behind themselves. Hair is not cheap anymore. It's, it's very expensive. So people are looking more into making sure they're actually getting what they're buying. So make sure you just get your weighing scale and make sure that the weight of the hair is what they say it is. So the eighth thing you want to do is you want to test the hair out by washing it. So the type of shampoo you want to get is neutralizing shampoo. Um, get the hair, put it in a sink or a bucket, fill it up, put neutralizing shampoo in it. If the hair has pink suds, that means it's been chemically processed. Which will nine times out of ten again be what? Virgin hair. So again, I'm not saying this to say that you shouldn't be selling virgin hair. Virgin, there are many vendors who sell virgin hair that is still very good quality, especially if you're trying to sell more affordable hair to your clients and not, you know, rip their head off. There's still good quality virgin hair, but these are some of the cons that you're, you're going to have to deal with, you know. But if you're selling raw hair, which is way more on the expensive side, you know, this would probably be more of like a luxury brand, then the suds should be white and clear. And if you are getting hair from a vendor that says that they're selling raw hair and the suds turn out to be pink, it is not raw hair. It means that it has been chemically processed. Raw hair should not be processed at all. It should be unprocessed, no pink suds. Virgin hair should be, it's, it's not times out of 10, it's going to have pink suds and it's going to be chemically processed. You also want to make sure that after you wash the hair that it still has its natural state and its pattern to it. So again, if you have a body wave bundle and you wash it, it should still have a little wave to it after you wash the hair. It should not be just straight. So that means it's really not body wave, okay? So that's something else that you should do to test out to make sure that your hair is the actual pattern and texture that they say it is. And that is also another way to check to make sure if it's being chemically processed or not by using the neutralizing shampoo. The ninth thing you want to do is you want to do a color strand test, okay? So this is the part where you're going to see how well your hair colors. So... Honestly, if you bought my ebook of my hair vendors and different questions to ask your vendors when buying hair, you should already be asking these questions and asking them how well does the hair color? Does it color up to 613? Does it color up to 27? This will kind of kind of give you an idea of the quality of the hair off the jump. But again, I'm giving you game on what to do after you receive the hair just in case they're lying before you start selling it to your customers. So take a small piece of the hair, bleach it. I personally like to use Blonde Me Bleach. I um, think they, do they sell it at Sally's? I'm not sure. I buy it from Cosmo Prof, but you do have to have a license in there or you have to be in school to be able to shop in there. Just type it in on Google and see where else you can get it from. It's called Blonde Me. That is the bleach that I use. You don't have to use that, okay? You can use Quick Blue or whatever bleach that you prefer to use, but... Probably, I would probably use like a 40 volume, especially if you're trying to see if it bleaches to 613. Because again, the higher the developer, the more it will, you know, bleach to. So if you're using something lower, like a 10 or 20, it's probably not going to bleach as high as a, a 40 or a 50 wood or whatever. So just make sure you do a color strand test. See what color it turns to see if it turns to 613 or 27 or 27 which is more like a medium brown or whatever so if it doesn't if it just only lifts to that color that means it's probably more on the lower quality side and then if it does bleaches up to like a 613 then it means it's a high quality it it colors really really well so that is how you test and see how well the hair colors the tenth step, which is going to be our last step that you want to do, is you want to get the hair installed, whether it's on someone that you know personally or yourself. Me personally, if it's my brand, I would definitely probably get it installed on myself so I can know the quality of the hair that I'm going to be selling. So I would wear it for, you know, about two weeks to a month maybe. I feel like, you know, this is, you don't just get a get hair from a vendor and just automatically start selling it. it it takes a little time before you just introduce it to your clients to say hey i'm selling hair 
you know, if that's you, if that that's what you want to do, then it seems like you may just be trying to make a little quick dollar. No shade. But if you really care about the quality of your brand and the quality of your hair and what you're going to be selling, then you definitely want to get the hair installed. After about a week, you want to be running your fingers through the hair, checking again to see if the hair has any shedding, seeing, you know, if the shedding has increased. Because like I said, fresh out the pack, is, it, it may not be much shedding. But after you actually wearing the hair and installing, you may start to see like, oh, goodness, like this hair sheds a lot. And most cases you will be able to see that after like a week sometimes like three days but i like i said keep it in for about two weeks see like okay this is the second week let's see how we doing third week let's see how we doing see if it's tangling and matted up you know when you wake up or when you go to sleep just see how well the hair holds up its quality and you know that way like i said before you actually sell it to your clients you will already know what to expect. You're going to know the quality of your hair. You're going to know how well it does. And me personally, if you plan on selling different textures and different patterns, you may be want to get all of those patterns installed and wearing it. Now, if this happens to be the case and you do want to sell more than one pattern, and you know, you don't want to wait all of these weeks and all of these months to keep putting your business behind then that is when you may want to bring in your friend or your mom or your cousin or sister or whatever. Get the curly hair installed on them. Get the straight hair installed on them. I'm going to do the body wave. Like, however you want to do it. We're going to all wear this hair at the same time, and we're going to see how it does. First of all, you shouldn't be selling, like, five, six, seven different patterns because I've tried that, and trust me, no. That's when I first started selling hair. I was trying to sell every single texture and pattern that my vendor had. And it was just a big no. So stick to something small. Find you at least like three good patterns to work with. It don't even have to be three. Sometimes it could be one. It could be two. And that's what you just go with. But these are all of the steps that you should do when looking for things and testing out your hair after you receive it. So this concludes all of the things you should do and look for when testing out hair. I have a vendors list that I sell and it is on my website. It is a very good list to start out with. You know, I have virgin hair, raw hair, Vietnamese hair vendors, Indian hair vendors, just a different range of hair vendors that you can start out with. I also have a list of questions that you should be asking your vendors you know, through the conversation phase of things that you should be asking before you even purchase the hair. So if you don't even know where to start, don't even know what vendors to look for, I have a list of vendors ranging from, you know, virgin hair, which is, you know, more affordable hair, all the way to raw hair and Vietnamese hair, which is going to be more on the more expensive side. So just whatever you plan on making your brand, I have a variety of vendors in my vendor list so this will conclude what you should look for make sure you check out my vendor list and thanks for watching if you have any other questions or any other tips that you would like to know when starting your hair business or things you should look for let me know in the comments and i'll see you guys next time